Hello friends, welcome back to the farm. Today we're going to take you on a tour of our market garden, June 2023. Welcome to our market garden. Now we actually have a few things outside, just mostly flowers, ornamental. I like things to be pretty. Now this was pretty. It's a native honeysuckle, but the aphids got on it. Aphids have been rough this year. So I'm hoping it recovers and blooms again, looks pretty. And just other flowers and, and some sage and some comfrey. Just a few things to make it pretty as I'm coming in the gate every day. And one of the first things over here is my, I call it a hospital, but it's like a nursery. I keep up my little baby trees. Right in here are some pawpaws that are doing pretty well, actually. So why are they under the cover? They don't like direct sun. They're an under, understory tree, so they like to be covered a little bit. So I protect them. Now the next ones are some trees my son brought from his yard that he found. And some of them are making it, some of them aren't. The two dogwoods look beautiful. We have a bunch of white pines that we got from what, the conservation yep, place down at the last end, year? The white pines. White pines and then white oaks that we got last year. If we plant them right out in the field, they would be deer food. So I keep them in here for a couple years, get them really big, and then we'll put them out with some cages. But this gets them really established before and they so go So the out. drip line, does that give them enough water? It gives them some, but every couple days I still give them another shot. And see, we also have red oaks. Oh yeah. White oaks and red oaks. See the sharp edges are the red oak yep. and the rounded leaf of the white oaks. Now right next to the tree nursery is my herbs, some of my herbs. So why are they separate than everything else? Well, a couple of them I have in bags or in the boxes because they can be invasive. I don't want them to take over the whole garden, like my uh, lemon balm, my mints, oreganos. Those kind of things can go crazy. So I keep them contained, hopefully. Um, and believe it or not, I didn't plant these. They must have been in with my thyme seeds. They're growing everywhere I have thyme. So there must have been a few of those little seeds. Somehow, the, the uh, company got, I forget who it was, but must have gotten a few Johnny Jump Ups in their things. Now they look like carrots down there to me. No, it's actually parsley and a weed. Okay. <laughs> it's flat parsley and curly parsley. Okay. And the flat is actually supposed to taste better, but the curly is really pretty. <laughs> All right. So I grow both. So there's the herbs, and then this is actually hyssop. Somebody told us to grow that for our bees, so I'm starting some hyssop to go. Now these aren't herbs, but I forgot about my gladiolas, had an empty box, I had to put them somewhere and there was nowhere else to put them, so I have a box of gladiolas. They're gonna be beautiful. But then some other herbs I have are self-heal or heal all. And then over there's three different types of oregano. I like oregano. Which one? There's oregano right yep. there. Yeah. So these, um, if it is... Those are actually some kind of flower. I forget what they are, but they were okay. left over and I had a bag. So the reason they're in their bags is just so that they don't get out of the yes, bag. Yes, so they stay under control. And the big white fluffy stuff there is cilantro that I let go to flower. I'm letting go to seed. The bees love the flowers. And I'm gonna go ahead and let it produce some seeds and then I'll drop the seeds on the ground and have a new crop of uh, cilantro. But it's pretty and it smells. Amazing, when you brush up against it, you smell cilantro. All right, so some of the herbs are on this side, some are on this side. I actually have some herbs, but I have kale down both sides of the herbs, part of the way. What is First you have right sage, here? yep, these are kale. Okay. And then right in the middle are sage. And aren't they beautiful flowers? Yeah. They're just beautiful. That the bees are on them. Mm -hmm. no. They love them. Is that them. a different color kale? Yes, it's purple kale. I guess it's technically called red, but it's more purple than I red. I should have guessed. I love kale, especially sausage kale potato soup. Now I have a couple little rosemary plants that are just starting to really take off. Where's the rosemary? Right here. Ah. Uh. Here. Just rub it. Oh man, smell that. So you like mixing things together, don't you? Well, and different. it's supposed to be good for it. It keeps the bugs confused, supposedly. Okay. Now I think that's actually some more parsley. <laughs> I have some marshmallow, which I've never grown before. We'll see how that does. And I have some valerian, which I've never grown before, but it's starting to go to town now. So what does valerian do? For, I'll use it for the root, valerian root, to help you sleep. Oh. I'm learning more about herbal medicines and stuff, and instead of buying them, I wanna see if I can grow them. Plus, they're supposed to be really pretty. Okay. So if it can be pretty and functional, 
that's right down my alley. And I'm trying to get hibiscus going. They're struggling. They're not doing so well. So, I don't know. We'll see how they do by the end of summer. But it was worth a shot anyway. Okay. So looks like we got flowers in the next yep. row? Next I have my snapdragons. I do uh, cut flowers at the farm stand. And snapdragons just add so much to cut flowers. And some like, that one right there is just gorgeous. The pink yeah. and the yellow together, they have some of the most amazing colors. But they are falling huh. over. They're the real tall ones, and they too yeah. tend to fall over. And then further up this row, I have some spinach, some which is still good, and I'm still picking from it. That right there is still good enough. I'm picking some from it. But the ones toward the center row have gone to seed. Well, they're bolting. Huh. They're going to seed. And what that's going to be is chicken food. So this is chicken food. Yep. Bolting. Every day I'll just pull like six or eight plants out, give it to them. And this lettuce is actually lettuce that's been in for a while, and it's a little bit bitter. So I'll pull six or eight lettuce plants out every day and give it to the chickens. So okay. everything on this end of the row is going to be chicken food. So nothing goes to waste. <laughs> Somebody eats it. We can't, but the chickens can. Okay. All right, this is part of our strawberries, and this was an experiment. We've always had the netting over it to keep the birds off, but we have had a hoops that we have to take the netting off, put the netting on every time we pick it. This, we already had the posts and the wire, so I thought, well, I'll experiment this year. And it works great. You just have to lift this and climb in there and pick. Now, the only problem is I am, of course, like 5'8". It's short. The grandkids can go in there and pick without bending over. Mm -hmm. I can't. So now that I know the experiment works, I think Donnie's going to make them higher next year, and we'll do a better job of putting it up. But it does work. The birds yeah. haven't gotten in, and mm. it's so much easier just to climb in than to have to take the netting off and on. beautiful this year, and there's almost yes. no weeds. Yes. It's doing well. They're doing well. Now, we don't have as many strawberries as we did other years because we moved them. Okay. Where they were before, they were getting toward the end of their lifespan, but they also had a lot of um, disease So you pests. have about 10, 50-foot rows? One, two, three. Yeah. 10, 50 foot rows. Yep. There's six on this side, and then there's four on the other side that still have just the hoops and the netting. That's the hard way to do it, where you have to take the netting off and on every time you pick. Okay. I like this way better. And now we have a row of sugar peas, which my granddaughters love to eat. They just go in and pick sugar peas and eat them right off the vine. Now you have them climbing up the Yeah, the this trellis nice here. trellis that my husband put up. <laughs> this was actually part of our corn crib that was here when we bought the farm. And it was beyond repair, so we tore There's it down. Nice oh, he needs picked, actually. We tore it down, and we've been using all the pieces of it. And this is part of the old, old corn crib. And it's perfect for sugar peas. So you don't see many on there right now because you just picked them I all. picked them this morning, yeah. So most of them are small, but that guy could be picked. Yep. And then I do mix things in all over the place. I have some onions here, and I have lettuce on the inside of the onions. Onions are supposed to keep the pests away from everything. I don't know. So your onions can be as good as they were last year? I don't know. We had a ton of onions last year, and they were huge. Yeah. So we'll see. I have them in three different spots. Okay. Actually, some under the net, which I didn't plan well, and some here and some on the other side. So okay. we should have a lot of onions. Now, the next row is all flowers. It's straw flowers and status, which okay. are you can dry them. They can be dried flower, which I could use later, or I can put them in bouquets this summer, too. Okay, so you have wood chips down the aisles. A lot yep. of people say, oh, be careful of wood chips. You're gonna, it's gonna suck up the nitrogen in the if soil. If you mix them in with the soil and they get into the soil and the plants, yes, they can suck away the nitrogen. But in the pathways, they're wonderful. All they do is keep the weeds down and attract worms. Yeah. And provide the, what's the word, microondial, whatever that word is. Yeah. The stuff that's good for the soil. Okay. And stuff like that. It, they're just really good. All right, so what's in the middle right around your plants? Oh, right here? Yeah. I have a bunch of dirt and compost, soil and compost, but then I do my regular mulch. I take um, leaves from last fall that we picked up and put it on the grass and mow it with the grass. So it's leaves and grass mixed together, which is browns and greens, which turn into compost. But it's perfect because the grass is too heavy. If you just put plain grass and leaves, if you just put leaves on, they blow away, especially here. But you put them together, they're a beautiful mulch, keep most of the weeds down, they decompose, and they help feed the soil. So, and it really helps hold the moisture in. Okay. So it's, it's great, I love it. Seems to work. It does. Oh, and I have some beets put along my back of my sugar peas. 
Oh yeah. I'm trying to use every little bit. And actually the more stuff you have planted, the less weeds you'll have, the plants take care of it. And these okay. are my green beans. They're just bush beans, huh? Yes, bush beans, and they're the tricolor. They're green, yellow, and purple. Now the purple ones turn green when you cook them, but they look really cool. <laughs> the grandkids like eating purple green beans. And they think it's magic when they turn green. So they have a bit to go yet. Yes, they're just now starting to take off. Probably by next week they might have some flowers, but it'll be well before we're picking beans. So we haven't had rain here in five weeks. How are your, how are your plants yes. doing? Irrigation. Without irrigation, they would all be dead. I, yeah. We need rain. We really yeah. do. Even with the irrigation, they would be doing better with rain. Everything does better with natural rainwater. But we do what we can. We're keeping them alive. All right, so we showed you what was down this side part of it. Now we're going to take you over to this side. And we actually have our garden divided into four irrigation quadrants, like one, two, and then there's three and four, plus the whole orchard back there that's not irrigated. So for this side, the first three rows are all asparagus. We love asparagus and we've been eating asparagus <laughs> almost every day, every other it's day. It's funny looking asparagus right in front of it. What is that? <laughs> What? Oh, these. I have daylilies at the end of all my rows. I love flowers. So I want my garden functional and pretty. And by the end of the summer, the daylilies are just blooming and it's gorgeous. It is gorgeous. Now they're getting a little rambunctious and taking over, so I'm going to have to dig them back a little bit. But they're beautiful. But now asparagus. I mean, it's easy to grow. You plant a crown, you have asparagus forever. But I need advice, okay? I am somewhat of a novice to some gardening and Apparently there are male and female asparagus. And I hear differing things depending on who I watch or read. Some people say, just let them go. Some people say, like this is a female producing the berries and the seeds. Oh, I would have guessed male. Nope, she's pretty female. They say to go ahead and cut those fronds off so it doesn't put energy into making seeds. Some people say you should go as far as digging out all the female plants. They say you get more asparagus on males. But I found every plant gives me asparagus, it seems like no matter what. So if you're an asparagus expert, please tell me what's the best thing to do with male and female plants. I'm still learning that one, but we, we were very blessed with lots of asparagus this My year. My vote is we keep the males and females together. Yeah, <laughs> that would be your vote. Well, I'll have to do whatever makes the most asparagus. I did one row of purple. The purple didn't do as well this year. We'll see. But the rest of them, we had a lot of asparagus, but now it's in the very dwindling down to the end. Now the trellises are also part of our old corn crib. <laughs> we do try to reuse everything, but they're perfect to vine heavy things up. And at the bottom of these are cantaloupes. I'm going to try vining cantaloupe up over the trellis. Now show me the cantaloupe. We these got are to... cantaloupe right here. Mm -hmm. And look, they have flowers and a couple of them actually have little baby cantaloupes. So how are you going to train them to go up? I, come on down here, I'll show you. Now this is actually moonflower and morning glories to make it pretty. <laughs> Here's one that's vining up. And I use the same clips I use on my tomatoes in the tunnel. Just little plastic clips, just to hold it in place until it gets, it'll actually start going itself and I can weave it through here. But to keep it, you know, head in the right direction, I use those to start with. But between them are calendulas. And that's supposed to be a good companion plant for cauliflower. We're right there. Yep. These are calendula. They give up beautiful orange flowers. Nice. They're really pretty. I'm trying to think where are I saw. Are they just for beauty or do you use them for your... You can actually uh, use them in herbal madness now. If you zoom in here, look, there's a little baby cantaloupe. Teeny uh, tiny yeah. little guy. Now yeah. I'll have to see how I am able to um, support the cantaloupe as they hang down. Some cantaloupe should be strong enough to hold it there, but I might have to support it with something. We'll see. And between each of the trellis, I have chamomile. That's also supposed to be a pest deterrent, which it does have a very strong smell. Now it's near the end of its life, so it also turns into chicken food. Chickens love chamomile. So I've been cutting off the tops, like those over there are all cut back, feeding them to the chickens, and I'll see if I can get a second bloom out of them. They look like know. mini daisies to me. That's what they look like, yeah. But to make chamomile tea, you just take the flower off, pop, dry that part, and you have chamomile tea. Oh. And I, I dried a bunch last year. I need to start picking again for this year. But oh, they smell so good. 
Well, the whole market garden is irrigated. Why do you still have hoses? There's times I still need a hose. Like I said, I give the uh, little plant hospital extra shots every once in a while. Same thing when I plant a new plant. Like if there's a baby plant or something that I want to give extra, I can give it a little extra care. Uh, or if something just looks like it needs extra water, I have it here. And I use it an amazing amount, surprisingly. But it just comes in handy to have it. Or if you get your hands all messy, you can wash them up out here. Okay. So what are the uh, leaves laying upside down next to your... Those are rhubarb leaves. Oh. I picked rhubarb the other day and made rhubarb butter, which by the way is delicious. And rhubarb leaves are actually poisonous. So I thought, well, they'll be good mulch, they'll keep the weeds down, and maybe there was a rabbit in the garden, actually. And I was afraid he was going to eat my little baby cantaloupe. So I thought, well, maybe if there's something poisonous in front of it, he won't eat it. <laughs> it's still there. Maybe it worked. But it does, I mean, they're, they're thick and heavy. They do provide a good mulch. Okay. And they'll just decompose and go into the soil. So. The other question folks ask is, how come you have such a wide <laughs> row in the middle of your garden? So the big garden tractor can go the whole way in there with wood chips, compost, whatever we need. We wanted to be able to bring the tractor the whole way in the garden. And it's been a very wise decision. Yep. <laughs> okay, so we're skipping the strawberries. You said you had well, four rows These are the here. other four rows of strawberries. They're still just the hoops that we have to take the netting off every time we pick it and put it back on. Yeah. Oh, and okay. did you see the really big, bright red strawberries? Look, look at this big red strawberry. Yeah. <laughs> That was my Christmas present last year. My daughter and granddaughters made, oh, I don't know how many of those, quite a few, 30 or 40 big red strawberries that we put around the plants before the berries started developing. It's supposed to teach the birds that strawberries aren't good because they go to peck at it and it's hard. Now, this bird still came after it, but I think it's kind of cool. Now I'm using it to selectively hold runners down so they'll root, because right now I'm trying to develop some uh, new plants to make some new rows. You got some action going on This here. is my squash section. Okay. I love spaghetti squash and zucchini. Not everybody gets excited about spaghetti squash, but it's a combination of spaghetti squash and blue Hubbard, which got is supposed to keep the squash there. bugs away. Or actually draw the squash bugs in so they eat the, the blue Hubbard instead of my spaghetti squash. I don't see any damage from squash bugs yet. Well, they haven't really gotten here yet. Yeah. <laughs> Give it time. Now I actually had a few odds and ends uh, sunflowers. I didn't know where to plant. So there's actually a few sunflowers that are gonna pop up in here like that my right squash. there that's is a, sunflower. a sunflower yep <laughs> okay. i think it's going to be pretty you know yeah. these squash will be on the ground vining all over the place right. and in the middle there's going to be a beautiful sunflower stand there well i'll give you credit for the interesting <laughs> mixing flowers and vegetables all together well, and i think it i think it might confuse the bugs because if yeah. you have all a big area of one thing the bugs are like ooh, there's the buffet I if there's a bunch of stuff they don't sometimes. like yeah well, it confuses me too <laughs> but um it does make some sense now this was another experiment i have onions down both sides and zucchini and yellow squash in the middle. All right, so I couldn't tell you which one this is. Zucchini, oh, actually, look, look, that's yellow squash. Look at the little baby yellow squash coming on. Oh, yeah. Now, he's only gonna develop if the, when the flower comes open, the bee pollinates it. Okay. If not, he won't develop. Okay, and then, so what's next to it here? That's actually a blue Hubbard squash, one of those supposed trap plants. Oh. I don't know if you can actually eat blue Hubbard squash, but okay. they're kind of like a sacrificial plant. Well, the onions look fantastic. Yes, they're doing really well. Well, see, I also try to make use of the drip lines. I only have two lines. So it's kind of between the onions and the squash, so they both get help from the drip line. Okay, so I noticed you have one type of plant at the end where the aisle is, and on the outside, yeah, what do you I have, just, daisies? I have something on each end. Yeah, those are daisies. I actually grew from seed a whole big row of daisies. So I, little by little, I've been moving them to places where I want them. I put some all around the farmhouse. I put some throughout the garden. My daughter took some for her house. Oh, look here. This is what you want to see in your garden right here. See that little ladybug? Now, do you know why he's there? Mm -hmm. There are aphids on this plant. Uh -oh. And he is eating, or she, I guess, is eating the aphids. So good girl. We want ladybugs. And I have nice. seen a ton of the ladybug the youth, the larvae, whatever, on plants. And now I'm seeing the adult ones. So, yes, ladybugs. Okay. Now, these plants are interesting. This is comfrey. Um, it's a wonderful plant. Don't plant it somewhere unless you want it there forever because it has like a three foot taproot. Now, this is a sterile one. It will not spread by seed. But if you dig up and get a little tiny piece of root and put that somewhere in the dirt, that will turn into a comfrey plant that will be there forever. But they're good. Number one, they're pretty. Number two, the bees love the blossoms. 
But now that the blossoms are just about over, you use them for fertilizer. You can chop and drop, which just means chopping off the plant, dropping it around your other plants, and as it rains or irrigates, the fertilizer goes down through. Or you can make something called comfrey tea, where you soak it in water and make a fertilizer tea. Now, I haven't done that yet. That's on my list. Well, when we get back to the orchard, I need to cut a couple of them. So let's cut them. We can show yeah, them. Yeah, they're getting to the point where they all need cut because they They're fall easy over. to cut if you have the right tool. Yeah, but I'll tell you what. Within a few weeks of cutting them, they grow back. Yeah. You can sometimes cut them three times a summer. Even when so, there's not a lot of rain no, because the roots they, are so deep. No, they're amazing. But see, going down deep like that, they get some minerals and things that other plants can't get that have shallow roots. All right, we've got a These lot of These are just going regular here. peas. I love fresh peas. Peas. Now they're a pain in the behind to shell, <laughs> but we are going to have a bunch of peas. I pick them when they're not super big. I like the baby peas, but oh honey, we're going to be eating fresh peas. I, I can't wait. Yeah, they're loaded, all three of these. Now I'm trying to get a lupine growing between them because the drip <laughs> tape goes the whole way and I'm trying to get something to grow where the drip tape is. Lupine. He's a little one. I had a row of those too that I started from seed. These are two of the smaller ones. I put some bigger ones around the farmhouse. But I like starting something from seed. It's cheaper. Plus it's just a feeling of satisfaction to go from a seed to a ton of plants. So it's exciting. At least to me it's exciting. <laughs> Now this is the next quadrant. We did the front two quadrants, now we're on the back two quadrants. And that whole first row is my row of daisies. I've taken a bunch out of there and put them elsewhere, but these are all gonna stay there at least for this year and have beautiful, beautiful daisies on them. And this is my row of broccoli. I did a video showing planting this stuff and it did amazing. I took the advice of Chelsea from Little Mountain Ranch of putting partially composted manure right around the plant and then I used my regular mulch everywhere else, and I had heads like this. Now, most of them have been picked. Now, he's starting to get ready to go to flower. The smaller heads I'm letting go because then I'll come out and pick all the smaller ones off. But we have had a lot of broccoli. There's still a few heads to pick, and I'll get those sometime this week. So with the cover, you haven't had any bugs, have you? No, this mesh, it provides, you know, the rain can get through everything else, but the bugs cannot get in there. And this kind of stuff does not need pollinated, so you don't have to worry about getting bees in. Strawberries, you have to use the looser netting so bees can get into this. Tuck them in tight. So this row is potatoes, regular potatoes. Should I tell them my story about what I did with the potatoes? Yeah, <laughs> fess up here. I must Come have been on. in a hurry one time because these are the potatoes from we kept from last year that had sprouted. They were doing great, but I bought some potato slips too, or potato, potato uh, seed potatoes, and I planted them. And I kept looking for them to come up, looking for them to come up, and I thought, I got ripped off. These are really bad sweet potatoes. They're not going to grow. Well, then, a few weeks later, I was over working on the sweet potato row, and I'm like, hey, there's a potato. I must have planted them there a couple years ago. Well, there's another potato. Another. I planted the potatoes in the wrong row. <laughs> so I already have sweet potatoes planted there, so I'm slowly digging up the potatoes that come up and moving them to the potato row. Good idea. So, I couldn't believe I did that. Somehow, I guess it was in a hurry, it was going to rain, and I just stuck them in thinking what it was the potato row. It was the sweet potato row. Now the next row is all cauliflower with a few cabbage at the end. Can we I take a look prefer. at one? They're ready? You sure can. They're getting ready. Look at them. Tell me that's not beautiful. Wow. We're going to be eating cauliflower. Yeah. And now they can get sunburned. So what I've been doing is just breaking like the top leaf and having the top leaf kind of lay over on it so it doesn't get sunburned. Okay. But they'll grow a little bit more. I'll wait till they're good size. We've picked one so far. And then later we'll pick the rest. And this is my row of sweet potatoes. <laughs> You're just coming up? Yes, well, I planted the slips. Remember, I started them from our last year's sweet potatoes where I started the slips, put the slips in water, rooted them, and brought them out here and planted them. Yep. And most of them made it through that frost we had, that, so these that late frost. So these grow like crazy and they'll I'll expand. have vines everywhere. They'll yeah. go nuts. But I figure by the time they really start vining, the cauliflower will be gone. Okay. I'll plant something else there. And then this row is my garlic. So why does the garlic look funny? Well, it's starting to die out and it's actually starting to give off scapes. I need to come out and cut scapes off. Oh yeah. Cut them off so you can get bigger bulbs. And we did, our garlic did really well last year. So hopefully it'll do well this year. So it's doing what it's supposed to. Yes, it is. The rest of the row is kind of like 
where the strawberries used to be, I left a bunch of odds and ends plants. It's like our wild patch of strawberries. So that if we had any dye over there, I had strawberry plants I could use. So there's a bunch of weeds. That's kind of like our wild untamed section. Okay. And the next row is watermelon, right? This is my row of watermelons. One of them, I have two rows of watermelon and they're just starting to vine out. So this area should turn into one big watermelon mass with hopefully yeah. lots of watermelons. And hopefully your row here will contain them. Yeah, we'll see. But this stuff, I don't care if it does vine through here. This is all yarrow. It's a beautiful perennial flower and it actually has some medicinal purposes too. So, and they look really pretty in cut bouquets. I like how there's so many different colors. I do a whole bouquet of just yarrow, all the different colors. So my plan for this row, I have yarrow in the front and I have some sunflowers seeded in the back. So I hope to have a whole row of colorful yarrow with sunflowers coming up behind them. At least that's the plan. That's what it looks like in my head. We'll nice. see how it really turns out. Okay. And on the ends of these rows, I have iris and false sunflower that are just starting to bloom. Okay. So, pretty. All right, so this is the fourth irrigated quadrant of the garden. And this first row is my cabbage. I like cabbage. And it did well this year. I mean, look at, look at some of these. I picked one this morning, but I have some beautiful, nice big heads of cabbage. I'm gonna be picking some of those and putting them at the farm stand probably tomorrow. I mean, they're all like that. Oh, they're beautiful. And I think it's because I put, well, I did the same thing as the broccoli and cauliflower partially composted manure with my mulch all over it and then netting from the minute they're in the ground they're netted so the bugs can't get in there because last year I got some big cabbage but they did have some worms in through it so this netting is a lifesaver if you want to be organic gardening do that if you can you don't need sprays you don't need anything the netting takes care of it so in addition to the organic how else do you treat your soils I know I haven't seen you use a rototiller in here no we're no-till once in a great while, we'll use the broad fork if it really needs broken up. I mean, we've had to work at getting good soil. We bought the farm, what, three and a half years ago, and all of this had been commercially farmed for years and years and years. More so than 100 years. The soil is good here. It's good limestone soil, but there was no soil life. We would dig and there was no worms. I mean, it had been chemically farmed for years. So there was no life in the soil. So we have been working and working to bring in all kinds of organic matter and baby the soil and build it up. And finally, we've got some good soil. I yeah. mean, it, it takes a while. If you're starting out, you got to keep working at it every year to get it built up. A lot of amendments. And yeah, we get, we get lots of, you know, all the wood chips, the leaves, the Plus grass. Plus having cows helps. Manure. <laughs> That's the lifeblood of the garden. Yeah. But it does well. And if you notice, there's chamomile. I don't know if you saw it between the cauliflower, the broccoli. Again, it's supposed to be a pest deterrent. And I'm doing an experiment. Chamomile self-seeds very easily, but under the net, I'm not sure if it's getting pollinated. <laughs> so I'll find out next year if it's still self-seeded and if I have chamomile everywhere. Okay. But it looks pretty too. So, but it does, I don't know. I have not had any cabbage moths or anything. So between the netting, the chamomile, whatever, it's working. All right, so this is the second watermelon row. I'm gonna have a ton of watermelons over there. Well, it looks like I'm looking at lettuce right now. What's that? I'm looking at lettuce right now. <laughs> I planted lettuce on either side because I have the drip tape. I might as well grow something. So this is the lettuce I'm picking from right now. But these watermelons seem to be a little bit ahead of the other side for some reason. I mean, look at this guy. He's starting to really vine out. And I planted nasturtium between them. Anything that's supposed to keep bugs away, I'll give it a shot. It looks nice and Maybe it works, we'll see. And the next row are my blueberries. You gotta go back and get some of the pretty, pretty blueberries. They're the ones I'm struggling with. Donnie wanted me to rip them out and be done with blueberries, but I wanna give them one more year. So I actually took this whole row and amended it with uh, peat moss, sand, a ton of compost, and I built it up because they really like a lot of drainage. And they seem to be doing well and I fertilize them with acid fertilizer. So, I mean, look at all those blueberries. Yep. So we'll see if how they do this summer. I'm I might have, for I you. might have salvaged my blueberries. I'm rooting for you. Yeah. <laughs> and I have some uh, borage mixed in too. That's a good, good plant to use for fertilizer. All right, and there's an amazing story here in the next row. My elderberries. We had four elderberry bushes last year and I wanted more. 
So I took a bunch of cuttings in over the winter and rooted them and babied them and put them in pots and worked really hard to get them to grow. And then I saw a guy on YouTube that said you can propagate elderberries by just taking a branch, chopping it in pieces, make sure you have like two or three nodes, stick it in the ground, and they'll grow. As you can tell, these were all just sticks in the ground. Ooh, look here. I know one thing the rabbit was eating. Look, he ate part of my elderberry. Oh, that boy. little bunny rabbit was eating my elderberry. But look at it. I mean, they're all, every single stick turned into an elderberry bush. So we are going to have a whole row of elderberries. Okay, so your mature elderberries These are, right are the four here. big ones down here. And that I did an experiment. One person on YouTube <laughs> says to chop them back to the ground when they're done at the end of the year. And other people said chop them back and leave about a foot or two. So I thought, well, I'll do two bushes one way, two bushes the other way. These I left about a foot or two on, on the stalk. These I took back to the ground. Now they're growing about the same pace. The, the ones that I left stalks have blossoms. These don't. But the big drawback, I think, to cutting them to the ground, look, there's nothing to support them. The branches are just falling to the ground. Whereas these, I think the dead wood in there is holding the branches up. They're not falling over. Let's so, look at that under there. Yeah, I will be leaving two to three feet on all my elderberries from here on. Okay. And I mean, look, these have tons of blossoms already. So I think that's the winner. Now I do have a few honeyberries. They're supposed to be an alternative to blueberry. They're supposed to take like, taste like blueberries, but they're elongated. There were some in here somewhere. There's little tiny ones. See, there's a honeyberry coming on. I don't know if we like them yet, so I'm hoping we get a couple ripen to see if we like them. If we do, I will plant more. They're supposed to be a lot easier to grow than blueberries. We'll see. All right, the last two rows in this quadrant, in the last quadrant, are my brambles. On this side, the whole row is red raspberries, and they are loaded with berries. In a few weeks, we are going to be picking tons and tons of red raspberries. Don't you talk about how you tied these up, how you well, trimmed them? Again, I had to watch YouTube and learn how to do it. And I pruned them pretty hard last year, what they said to do. And I thought, oh, I hope I didn't kill them. But look at them. They're doing great. And I just used little plastic ties to tie well, them up. There's a couple of our yeah, honeybees. Yeah, the bees are doing their job. Anywhere there's still flowers. Keep yep. doing it, bees. We want more berries. A lot of honeybees. Up one just tried to pollinate me. <laughs> so that row is doing great. On this side are the black raspberries. And look at them. A lot There's of people get confused between blackberries and black raspberries. Black raspberries are smaller. They're the smaller blackberries. The blackberries are the bigger ones. They're, they're good, but they have the bigger seeds too. And usually black raspberries are thorny. This is one thing the grandkids won't pick because there's thorns. But some of these are starting to turn red. Right here's a red one. And then within maybe a week, they'll be black and we'll be picking so black it would be a mistake to pick them when they're beautiful red. Oh yeah, they're not ready. Now those, you wait till they're beautiful red. These, they need to be black, really black. And then they just, they pull right off the vine. So this row is half. Okay, so you have, you can tell some of these are brand new. Yes. First year stocks. These black raspberries grow on second year growth. So like where they're growing, that grew up last year. Okay, now this all grew this spring. And that's what'll have berries on next year. So you year. can see the bright green yep. first year. Yep. And the mature second year stalks. So when I prune them this fall or in early winter, I'll be taking all the old stalks out and tying up the new ones and pruning them a certain way so they bush out and produce more. But yeah, you can see all the new, all the new. It's amazing how fast it grows in the yeah. spring. It's just like whew, they explode. It seems like one week they're just a bunch of dead sticks there, and the next week they're green. <laughs> now these are the blackberries and last year I hadn't pruned them at all <laughs> and they were completely out of control. We had blackberries everywhere and um, they were hard to pick because they were so massive and just out of control. So I really pruned them hard last year and they're easier to pick but look we're already getting, look here, blackberries. Look, I mean they're uh -huh. still flowering, the bees will be coming on a lot but there's yeah. blackberries already coming. Nice. But they're usually the last thing to pick as far as the brambles. We'll be picking the red and black raspberries. And then when they're done, we'll be picking blackberries. Oh, uh, I see a, a raspberry. Ah, he's starting to get ready. Yeah, 
He might be red enough to pick. I'd let him go one yeah, more day. Yeah, a little more. There's a few rogue ones that are, oh, here's one, that's, here's one that's ready. Look at this. Now that is a perfect yeah. red raspberry. You want to eat it? Go ahead. You can have it. Want it? Sure. Try it and give us a thumbs up or thumbs down. Mm. <laughs> Beautiful. They're good. There's some native bees on there too, not just the honeybees. Yeah, bees. yeah. And there's the bumblebee. They're all doing their job. All right, just to let you know where we're at here, those are the brambles we just showed you. And you're looking down the main pathway toward the gate that comes in. And over there's the other quadrants with the strawberries and the broccoli. And that's all part of the irrigated garden. But at the end of the irrigated garden begins the orchard. And the orchard is Donnie's domain. He's in charge of the fruit trees. Well, I'm just a little tired just walking through the whole garden. So people, when they see this, they're gonna say, how in the world do you keep this all going? Plus you have the high tunnel too. Yeah, well, I do have a few women that volunteer a day or two a week and my daughter comes and helps pick strawberries all the time. So, but it's a lot of work. Yeah. It, I'm tired a lot, <laughs> but I enjoy it. I enjoy gardening. I enjoy being out, seeing things grow. And it is so exciting to know we're growing food for our family. Yep. Most of our vegetables and yep. fruit for and our family. And the community we sell at yep. the farm stand. Yep, we sell quite a bit at the farm stand. Yeah. So it's just, I don't know, I enjoy it. It's hard work, but it's work that I enjoy. I can't wait to sink my teeth into the first juicy cantaloupe this year. I'm looking forward to that one, <laughs> especially. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. So in four years though, this is the best I think your garden, yes. market garden yeah. has ever been. It's taken four years to get the soil up and get a system down and just mm -hmm. to really get it established. Now it's established, it's keeping it maintained and and planning every year, where you're gonna plant things. And, and trying to anticipate the pests. Yeah, Ex and experimenting with things. What does work, what doesn't work. So every year's a little different, but it's fun. Yeah, so we haven't learned everything yet and we're interested in anything that you've learned yeah. or come across. Please tell us, we have learned a lot from comments from our viewers. Especially if you have something about squash bugs and squash vine borers, <laughs> I know they're coming. <laughs> So, okay. But I appreciate you coming along and letting us show you our garden. Mm -hmm. And I hope you're having a good day. And we will see you in our next video. Bye-bye.